Great guys, we are back and we're, we were talking about UAW, the strike, mm -hmm. and we were segueing into how the UAW strike is related to Tesla and basically something that you guys have not seen until just recently. Uh, exactly. Um, I found this amusing. Um, I'm a low-key Tesla hater, I'm going to be honest, but... I respect Elon Musk for his grind. He's got an excellent grind. Yep. Can't say that about X. His product has lost, what, 50% of its <laughs> value? Um, but I respect what he was trying to do. He was trying to protect free speech. He actually said it on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast not too long ago. Yeah. Um, so let's get into Tesla. Um, something extremely interesting came into play. And uh, I want to pull this article up real quick because I want you guys to... Um, I wanna, um, want you guys to actually see this. Uh, I actually forgot to pull this up. Oh, it's well, for news. basically ten years that Tesla's been selling, no one ha they have not had any advertisements. It's all oh, been word wow. of mouth, and now they do have advertisements. And who is doing the advertising, Bard? That's what I, that's what I want to get into. Actually, let me um, let me just read it from here. Um, so there's a guys. So there's an institutional investor. Okay, now, can you give us a rundown for the audience on what an institutional investor is? Just kind of so people can have an idea. It'd usually be uh, somewhere that's like a mutual fund or, um, yeah, some type of, uh, some type of uh, stock or, you know, I don't know, it could be something like Acorns even, you know, mm -hmm. that own enough shares that they're concerned. And when you look at that, why do you advertise? You advertise so you can sell more products. And why has Tesla not advertised in the past? Because That's they had... the key. That's the key. In the past, they had no... Competition. No competition. They were within a vacuum, we would say. Yes. So they enjoyed all the bragging rights of, oh, our vehicles are the fastest. Oh, our vehicles have... We're saving the planet. Range. Oh, we're saving the planet. And now... A monopoly. Right. And now, <laughs> and now everyone is literally destroying them at every metric along the way. Every metric. Well, Speed-wise, we have Nevera. We covered this. Nevera, yeah. Lucid. And what's funny is the, the CEO of Lucid came from Tesla. And now he's got a faster car. Well, and the, and the thing is, what you're finding now is... People are still going to buy Teslas, and they will. Bard and I are kind of in different places with this. He's a, you know, like he said, low-level hater or whatever. Low I yeah, low-key <laughs> hater. I'm not a hater. I um, I look at things exactly like I said before. I amortize the cost of everything, and if a Tesla is going to be the cheapest, that's what I'll drive. All right. So um, and I would look at it in terms of repair. All of these things would make me still buy a Tesla. At least at this point. The 2024 Tesla 3 is supposed to come out, supposed to have mm -hmm. a greater range, even though they're downplaying that, than the Tesla, uh, the 2023 model. So they're not lying on the software anymore? Oh, they well, they, they still lie. Oh, okay. I mean, it might say 330 miles or whatever so for the standard. Minus about 20%. Maybe more. If they keep it going, okay. Because, <laughs> well, the other one, I think it was at 200 and... Um, I think it, was, it said 250 or 260 miles, and it was actually getting right around... 209 um, in testing so right. who knows if you have your air conditioner on and you're going or heater on and you're driving mm -hmm. in a cold environment like um, Saskatchewan or Alberta Canada <laughs> you might be down to 120 miles yeah so you know I just uh, just just real quick I just realized uh, I had my mic on mute so but that's okay, okay. your mic's on so yeah. um, we're still I'm still gonna come through I hope you got you know but anyway um, it's back. It's not on me anymore, but I'll just have to adjust that. But go ahead. You're, you're, yeah. I was gonna. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna. I had the stat the who the, the investor is, but go but ahead. I think that Tesla is gonna still be able to sell vehicles specifically because they are now kind of changing from a luxury car into just like the normal. Honda Civic, right? The uh, normal everyday. It's the Honda Civic of um, maybe not quite a Honda Civic, maybe a Honda Accord mm -hmm. or a Camry of. The Model cars. Three, it's smaller than those cars. It's not as no, luxurious. No, but I'm saying, like for example, it's still better. Like than, a Civic, it's still better it's like, than a Bolt. Like I would say, a yeah. Bolt would be more of the the Civics. Right. So in this article, let me say this: there's a 
so Sawyer Merritt. I think that's the institutional investor, Sawyer Merritt. So basically, oh, actually, no. Sawyer Merritt, um, no, that's not the institutional investor. I, I apologize. Uh, I'll find that here in a second. But it, it doesn't matter. Why, from your perspective, why are institutional investors now concerned with this? Why would they, why would they be advertising? I, okay, so Tesla, okay, so institutional investors want to make money for themselves and yeah. their clients, right? Now, Tesla's been losing market share every year mm -hmm. in the EV market. Now, the EV market up until this point has only represented 1% of global sales in terms of automobiles, right? Um, so, it's a tiny piece of the pie, but it's a growing pie now because as an economics, a little balloon, yeah. you squeeze one end, the other end gets bigger. So, due to legislation, um, cars are gonna be forcefully obsolesced. Yep. Uh, internal, combustion, internal combustion engine cars, gas powered diesel, are going to be uh, forcefully obsolesced through legislation due to the climate, right? Thank so, you, Gavin Newsom. Right, exactly. So, um, now, uh, so what's happening is the institutional investors looking at this loss of market share over the last couple of years with Tesla, they've gone from 100% of the market down to like, they're a little bit over 50. I think they're at 56% now, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but they've lost a lot. And I would say in the last three years, they've lost about 20% market share, okay? They've, they've lost, in the last three years, don't, don't, you know, don't um, quote me on the exact numbers, but they've lost a, substa a substantial amount around the 20%, give or take 5%. So they are losing market share. So if you've got X amount of money invested and you have paired with a inflated stock price per Elon Musk himself, well, right? And basically for those of you guys who don't know, um, what Bart is talking about is Tesla's stock price as related to their price earning PE ratio. Mm -hmm. So. A P.E. ratio is how much money or you're going to be pulling in in the future. And Tesla's stock price, to go along with Elon Musk was um, being honest about, is it's so outlandish. They produce very few cars relative to Toyota and Ford, yet their P.E. ratio is giving them a company that's worth more than both of them. Now, so let me... Let me comment on that because we were talking about, okay, when it comes to investing, you know, you guys are familiar with pump and dumps. Hmm. Everyone knows what a pump and dump is. Ver pump and dump is very common in your um, like unregulated, yep. or think, think crypto, wild, wild west crypto, before there was any sort of government oversight in terms of, you know, the government going after the bad guys like Sam Bankman Freed, yep. Friedman, or Freed, or whatever his name is. Um, there are a lot of pump and dumps where pump it, a pump and dump is where they lie to you to get the price, the value inflated, and then it drops off. And the funny thing is, we did a video on Tesla, the dark side of Elon Musk. What's funny is Tesla, in a sense, is sort of a pump because he lied about the range, and he's getting sued now. Mm -hmm. He's getting sued. The government is actually suing uh, Tesla right now. So now, and he did that, and see when you do things like that, you affect the stock price. The stock price goes up. So now when you operate in a vacuum, being the only electric vehicle uh, maker with this huge network and the cars are super fast and super cool and you've got um, all these different companies around. Elon Musk is a brand in and of himself. Yep. He's a brand. So you have this rock star CEO. He's created a cult. Okay. Now you have something interesting going on. There's a lot of pump being put into this brand of Elon Musk and all these cars. I think that is how you explain at least some of that stock price. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of hope for the future. But look, now look, look at what's happening now. With the market share of EV vehicles, the more vehicles that are being put out. I, 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 I had a stat on this a long time ago I was using because I was arguing with a, my cousin about this. He's a big Tesla fan. There were people surveyed, and a lot of the people that were surveyed said 
they wouldn't buy a Tesla. And so they were waiting for something else. So they didn't trust Tesla for, for whatever reason. Some people like legacy. Maybe they want to buy something from Toyota. And I think, I think when Toyota starts to unleash the Kraken with EVs, I think Tesla's done. Well, I think that I think they're going to be at twenty percent sales of what they are now. Uh, they're going to be twenty. They're going to be twenty percent of the market. I think that it depends. Like for example, um, it, I, I still think that Tesla is going to do really well. But when you're comparing a Tesla against, let's say, a Prius Prime, a Prius Prime gets you six hundred miles on a tank of ten gallons. As long as you, I mean, the, as long as you use a plug-in, if you're just doing all electric, it might get you 40 miles. That's a way better deal for the average American who says, "Well, exactly. if I have to get a Tesla, I have to have." It's great to have an all-electric car, but I have to have another car in order to go somewhere further away. And you need infrastructure. That's why a lot of people are returning their Teslas because yeah. they were like, "I can't charge this thing," and the superchargers yeah, you, are you would think expensive. That these, you would think that these people would think about this before they buy the car. Right. That, that's the cult aspect. I mean, <laughs> that's your, see, guys, that is your cult aspect of Tesla. People want to be a part of the cult. Cults are cool. People always overspend and do things because of the cult aspect of a company. I mean, look at iPhones. What, what's happening in, 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 in Asia with iPhones? iPhones are, are not affordable in India. But people are buying them anyway. They're, it's like, it's like the equivalent of us paying like two grand or three grand for a phone. They're, they're, they don't make as much money in some other economies yet. They're going out of their way to buy these, um, and it's obsolete in two years. And it's obsolete in two years. But it's the cult that that create that paves the way for this sort of spending. Yep. That's what a cult does. So anyway, um, in terms of uh, Tesla. Um, with, with the, so the institutional investor, I still don't know who, this, who the investor is, it doesn't matter. They, are, they don't believe in the leadership of Tesla. No. Because they see, they see the numbers sliding, and there really is nothing Elon Musk can do about it, to be honest, because well, competition I, is now here. I think that there are things that he could do about it. And what I think he could do about it is probably coming up with maybe a hatchback or a normal looking pickup truck, you know, or um, even starting to produce other hybrids. So l let's look at it this hybrids. way. Mm. Like if you have a Tesla Model 3 or something like that, right, that has 100 miles or 120 miles of range, all electric range, and a five gallon tank. Again, you're getting going back to older technology, which is an ICE engine, right, an internal right. combustion engine and I, I know I don't think he wants to do that no he, it defeats the purpose of Tesla yeah but there are different things that you can do and you know maybe <clears throat> um, you just make a smaller like a, a Ford Maverick style smaller truck you know he needs rather, more rather than something that's really hideous like right. this uh, cyber truck cyber truck which we're gonna get to in a little bit yeah. but let's, let's look at it this way he'll never have 90 100% of the market ever again with no. EVs. So I don't care what he comes out with. But the thing is, I don't think there's, it matters. There's, there's brand loyalty when it comes to... See, I think these institutional... I think, I think Tesla's stock is going to drop big time. And I think these institutional investors are on their last ditch effort. But I think they're done. I think this is what's going to happen. Now they're advertising because they see no way out of this but to advertise, to break even or to get back what they've, they've they're losing ground or Tesla's losing market share to lessen the blow or to lessen the blow so they have to advertise but what's what's eventually going and it's only going to be a band-aid because eventually what's going to happen is i believe tesla will be somewhere around 20 to 30 percent of ev sales once the legacy automakers toyota mercedes Volkswagen. ford the big three Volkswagen, et cetera, once they get their models out on the market and it's established. I think 2025 is going to be a real test. Changing point. Yeah, That'll be a, that'll I mean, be a real test. Because I think that in order for them to jump in, and you look at the sales of Ionic sales for the H Hondas, mm -hmm. man, they're, you, everywhere you look, you see Hyundai Ionic 5s all they're over the place. They're crushing it. They're crushing it. you got the Kias, great The Kias look great, too. Um, the Kias look amazing, and I think... 
the Korean, the Korean automakers, the Koreans specialize in electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. They're very good at electrical engineering. I don't think their strong suit is automobiles and mechanical engineering in, in terms of making engines. Mm -hmm. they, they haven't been, the, they're, at, they're at the bottom in terms of reliability. Well, Some bad. American cars are better. They're not that great. And, and early Hyundai would outsource motors from Mitsubishi which isn't really that great of an engine anyway. Yeah. And anything they would make in-house wasn't that great anyway. And it, they just don't compare when it comes to internal you know, combustion engines like Toyota. Tesla sales might be buoyed, though, by the Cybertruck. Because I saw just, uh, I think I was mentioning it to you, there was a guy selling an option for a Cybertruck that's scheduled for delivery on November 30. It said it was already built. He's selling that option for $12,500. You could be one of the first people in the country huh. to have a Tesla Cybertruck. And maybe people are going to flock and buy this, um, in my opinion, absolutely hideous truck. Well, let me, let me push back on that uh -huh. just a little bit. Let, let me, not totally disagreeing, but let me say this. You mentioned the Cybertruck as being uh, maybe a possible way for them to kind of yeah. mitigate losses, right? Let me say this. Maybe the hideous aspect of the Cybertruck is what they need. Maybe they need a, a product that is so radically different that it draws in a completely different market. Well, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that there's a lot of rappers and a lot of people who live in big cities, Portland, um, San Francisco, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. Detroit, Chicago, um, New York, Baltimore, they need these trucks because they're supposed to be bulletproof, aeroproof. <laughs> <laughs> you just need it because yes. you might have IEDs in American street <laughs> Pretty soon, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you, Democrats. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the point is, there's, uh, if there's one reason I would consider one of those, it's because they're bulletproof. Because it's util for the utility. Yeah, see, exactly. See, Tesla making some, Tesla has to do something different to enter the market and to, to keep the market. I think they have to continue with different things, radical ideas to make it seem cool. And I think it's a smart strategy. I don't like the Cybertruck at all, but. If you lived in Detroit, would you buy one? Probably because it's bulletproof, <laughs> yeah. And it's cheaper than, it's cheaper than trying to bulletproof a, a, another car. Exactly. It's way cheaper. It costs you hundreds of thousands to do that. So I think if you were Tupac, would you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you would. Absolutely. Exactly. You know, in retrospect. <laughs> so when you look at it, who's ordering now? This caught my attention. There's um, I don't have to pull this up, but I'll, let me say this: the some police departments. Oh yeah. Are going to be buying cyber trucks? Maybe you could pull it up real quick if you if you if you can. Well, it doesn't um, matter. I mean, we, as long as we. All right. So we, we know yeah. that. Now we do know this. Tesla is competing. Who's their competitor when it comes to bulletproofing uh, police vehicles? Who's Ford? their competitor? Ford. Ford. The Ford Explorer Interceptor, which is the police brand, yeah. is now bullet resistant. Not totally bulletproof, oh. but it's so it's going to guarantee survivability me, of officers. Let me tell you this, Bard. Every police department better start replacing their cars with the electric because if they're forcing they that on everyone else mm -hmm. electric cars over the long run require less maintenance there are less money for the american tax for sure for sure if they're making us buy it they better buy it too and look at this they are um i was watching uh some a police show on um on youtube i don't it was just just tons of police shows it wasn't it was like can you imagine? Anyway, it was some, something from body cam cover, body cam footage. Just a second, and the um, the police department, I think it was in Oklahoma, the cop was driving a Tesla Model Y. Yeah. Could you yeah. imagine um, Walker, Texas Ranger, having been stopped <laughs> and charged for like five hours? Oh my God! You know, <laughs> it, yeah. You know, and here's the thing: we we were kind of joking about this yesterday, but the Cybertruck looks like something. It honestly looks like something you would drive in a dystopic society, like the end of the world. Which is where we're heading. Which is where we're heading, conveniently. And here's Elon Musk supplying that need. Yeah. We have a really hideous, bulletproof, uh, metallic, which is very indicative, you know, of 
sort of a bland look of that. That's the look of dystopia. It kind of looks like Terminator, Robot. Yeah, exactly. Top, it, you know? it it's very fitting for the times. You have no future. You have no. <laughs> you have no future. <laughs> uh, you'll have nothing, but you'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> World Economic Forum. Anyway, so I think um, I think that's that's the market, and I think that's where we're headed. Anyway, I'm done with this section. Yeah. You have anything to add? Nope. Um, but I'll tell you, if I was going to buy an all-electric truck right now, it would have to be a Rivian. I think they the are, Rivians are nice. They're beautiful. I think they are nice. They, they're fast. Beautiful. They have a real interior, unlike uh, the Teslas. Uh, well, who knows? Well, some, Tes some Teslas have real interiors. I don't really have a problem with how the Cybertruck looks inside. It's just the outside that's pretty heinous. It's, it's, it's hideous, but there's a market. Yep. And there were, people, there were a million people who signed up, who put down money to sign up. So okay. it tells me... Elon Musk is either a super genius and he's tapping into something we don't understand, or well, he's a fool and he's going to be he's a, a, a failure. He's a super genius because as soon as you get those orders in, he was able to take loans against those orders from banks. So great, great point. I mean, it's great it's like uh, pre-selling a house. You know, you True. have uh, you just start building them, you pre-sell some, and then you can get more loans based on your pre-orders or whatever it is. And let's look at the commercial aspect. Commercial being the police departments were buying them. If he can sell to all police departments and promise them savings, yeah. which he will do, which yeah. they will save money, because on repair... Well, he'll probably promise them all superchargers as well, you know? Supercharge, so repair and cost on fuel, they will save a ton of money. Yep. And the Cybertruck, the top of the line, line model, which I'm sure the police will get that, and they'll probably get a discount on it, Zero to 60 in what, two seconds? 2.3 or 1.9? It's fast. Yeah. And it's faster than anything they have right now. So he is answering a need. He's going to save money. And he's winning. The possibilities to run over more speeding motorcyclists is they're it's, endless. It's en <laughs> <laughs> Great for police chases and it's heavy. It's, it's survivability, bulletproof. Yeah. He's probably, he's probably smarter than we are in terms of this truck. And, but you aesthetically know, wise, I don't like it, but I see where it serves a need. Think about how much faster they could have gotten to Uvalde and they could have waited and had ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Donuts. Yeah. All right, guys. Are we done? <laughs> yeah, we're done. All right, guys. We're out. Uh, this has been the Sagey Bar Podcast. Thank you for all of our new subscribers. Hey, guys, definitely like, share, and subscribe. Definitely and share. Comment. Comment. And comment, comment, guys. We comment. We, we answer comments. We're not like other... Uh, YouTubers who are, uh, you know, got their nose in the air. We will answer comments um, if we like them. Uh, <laughs> and guys, that's it. Guys, we will see you in the next one. And as always, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye.